Our office is releasing a report, Year 3, Update on School District Finance. In this report, we include findings from a survey we distributed to all California public school districts to gather information to help the legislature uh, in building its education budget in 2012-13. Um, in the survey, we asked a range of questions. We asked districts how they're responding to recent budget reductions, flexibility policies, state funding deferrals, and how they plan to craft their budgets in 2012-13. From the three years that we've conducted the survey, this year has been, we've had the highest response rate this year. 467 out of 1,000 districts responded to our survey, and we have 67% of the students' population represented. One of our first finding areas is that districts have made notable reductions in recent years. Since 2007-8, districts have reduced their expenditures by 5%. And this is despite billions of dollars of short-term federal aid, as well as state funding deferrals um, to mitigate reductions. As shown in this figure, uh, districts have reduced their budgets by between 1 and 3 percent over the past few years. And this is in contrast to more sharp revenue decreases. Um, for example, the highest funding decrease happened in 2009-10, 6 percent decrease. But as you can see in the figure, districts more gradually decreased their expenditures. Some of the reduction the district made in order to reduce their spending levels um, is reducing their staff. So for example, um, districts have reduced their teacher workforce by 11 percent, and this has led to a consequent increase in average class sizes. They have also reduced the number of administrators in their districts by 16 percent, and this is the education employee group that was most reduced. Um, they have also reduced pupil support services staff and classified staff notably. Um, in order to balance their budgets, districts have also implemented a number of furlough days. And this is either reducing the number of staff development days their teachers have, or actually reducing instructional time and shortening the school year. Our second finding area is that categorical flexibility continues to be important for school districts. Um, in February of 2009, the legislature provided flexibility for 40 categorical programs in order to help districts balance their budgets. Over the three years that we've conducted the survey, districts have reported that this flexibility has been important for them in balancing their budget and maintaining local priorities. Um, however, in recent years, given funding reductions have continued, they found that it has become more difficult to balance their budgets given the current flexibility that they have. Um, despite this, districts have shifted significant funds from the majority of programs, and they have eliminated funding altogether for some. We also asked in moving forward how districts would like the state to approach a number of programs, whether they would like to restore some of the programmatic requirements, modify them with similar goals, or eliminate the programs altogether. The vast majority of districts report that they would like the state to eliminate most of the categorical programs. Um, despite that, we have a couple of exceptions. Uh, districts have shifted funds back for some programs. For example, deferred maintenance and instructional materials were two programs um, in which they were able to defer spending for some time, but had to shift some funds back to purchase instructional materials for their students or maintain their facilities. Our third finding is that districts are, pl are planning for a challenging budget situation in 2012-13 for two primary factors. One, budget resources continue to be constrained. And two, they're facing uncertainty on whether voters will pass either Governor Brown's ballot measure or any other measure that raises funds for K-12 education. Though Governor Brown has included revenues, expected revenues from his ballot measure in the state budget, districts have adopted a different approach. The vast majority report that they will not spend new revenues associated with any ballot measure prior to the November elections. A sizable portion of these districts also report that they will not spend new revenues associated with these ballot measures until 2013-14 so as to not interrupt their program. We also asked districts a number of questions regarding how the state can help them deal with budget uncertainty and constrained resources for 12-13. And we asked them if the state were to have additional revenues, how it should make those augmentations. And if it were to make more reductions in K-12, um, how it should make those reductions. Uh, districts overwhelmingly reported that they would like additional flexibility, um, and therefore make augmentations in general purpose funding streams and make reductions in restricted programs, such as economic impact aid. Lastly, restoring funding deferrals has become increasingly important for school districts. 
a rising number of districts have had to borrow or make cuts in order to deal with state funding deferrals. If the state were to implement more funding deferrals in 2012-13, districts are finding that they would have to either make cuts or borrow even more. So in sum, uh, districts have made notable reductions in recent years to deal with budget reductions. They also face a tough budget situation in 2012-13, given the uncertainty related to ball ballot measures that would raise funds for K-12 education. And lastly, districts have fundamentally changed how they fund uh, their local programs at the local level given categorical flexibility. In light of these findings, we have two sets of recommendations for the legislature to consider. Uh, the first set is a number of recommendations for the legislature to take immediate action to help districts manage budget uncertainty. The first is removing strings from a number of categorical programs that still remain restricted. The second is to adopt a modified version of the governor's mandate reform proposal. Third is to reduce instructional day requirements um, and allow districts to shorten their school year if needed. The fourth recommendation is that the legislature change the statutory deadlines for both final and contingency layoff notifications. And finally, to eliminate statutory restrictions related to contracting out and substitute teachers. The second set of recommendations are related to how the legislature could re initiate broad-scale restructuring of the K-12 funding system. We recommend the state replace the existing funding system with a weighted student formula or a block grant based approach. If the state were to take this approach, we recommend it implement a new system over several years to give districts time to adjust. Uh, the governor currently has proposed a six-year implementation time frame with a first year of holding harmless, and we think this is a positive approach. We also recommend uh, the state combine flexibility with stronger accountability. Um, though the legislature has made significant improvements over time, uh, there are a number of areas where our accountability system could still be improved. Although school districts are facing uh, tough budget times in 1213 and moving forward, we think that these recommendations would be helpful in the short term and the long term.